Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at Camper UK's Leisure Park near Lincoln in the Lincolnshire countryside. Now, this is the latest from Leica and you might be surprised to see that it's a camper van. I was actually here about a year ago with what was then the brand spanking new Ecovit Low Profile and you can still watch that video perhaps after this one. Now the Ecovit range as well as low profiles and A-classes gets a trio of camper vans and this is the smallest in the range, the 540. Now this one was destined for its launch at the NEC show in October but of course that show was cancelled so I've managed to grab it from Camper UK, the Leica dealer in Lincoln itself and this is the very very first one in the country. So it might not be to exactly the spec of future production ones for right hand drive but the spec is pretty indicative of what you will get here and they will be badged Da Vinci edition which gives you lots and lots and lots of extra standard equipment and while in theory you could uh, buy one of these new Ecovit camper vans from about 52 grand this one with all the kit on it is 67 or near as damn it 67,000 pounds now that's with the 140bhp engine and manual gearbox and all the toys that you see here and that's pretty much what a da Vinci spec will be although there are some details to be finalized and I wouldn't be surprised if these steel wheels with plastic covers get replaced with alloys in that da Vinci spec. So this is the Ecovit 540 and that of course means that it's on the medium wheelbase Fiat Ducato van at 5.4 meters long. There's also an Ecovip 600, which gives you a very similar sort of layout with a transverse bed at the back, but it's obviously that bit longer. And the main benefit appears to be in the washroom. Coming later on, there will also be an Ecovip 645 on the extra long 6.36 meter van. And that will have a rear U-shaped lounge. So that could be one to watch out for for the UK market. But we have here today the 540, as I say, and it does look rather a smart little van, doesn't it? Obviously, it's much more difficult for Leica to make their products stand out in the van conversion sector than it is with the Ecovit coach built, and particularly the A-Class models, but they have seemed to try quite hard with this vehicle. It's got a nice big electric step. Of course, sliding door is on the continental side still with right-hand drive, like most imported van conversions, but Look at these super slim, really flush fit fitting windows. They are a big plus in my eyes, make the vehicle look much, much neater. And then at the front, you've got these rather nice sort of copper colored highlights on the gloss black grill. And those merge into the stripe down the side. And of course, mate up also with the flying Greyhound logo that is part of Leica. If you're wondering where the Leica name comes from, well, Leica was the first female dog in space aboard Sputnik 2. Leica Motorhomes first came to the UK in about 1988 with the A-Class Laser Home range, and they've been here pretty much ever since. Um, but van conversions are much more new to Leica in the UK. They've dabbled in this sector before, but this is a, a much more serious entry into the van conversion world. What else can we say about the exterior? Well, this one's got the new big Fiat logo on it. And rather ironically, um, it seems that production ver versions, at least for the UK, will replace that with a Leica logo. But it does, at least here, show you that this is the very latest Series 8 Ducato. Uh, metallic paint don't think the duck approves of what I'm saying. Anyway, the metallic paint is an option, just over a grand now for metallic paint on this Fiat. Um, there's a choice of four colours. You can have white as standard, two greys and black, so nothing very exciting to choose from. Fog lights down there. As I say, the steel wheels. Again, these flush windows and plenty of them down the side. You've got your trim vent, of course, your toilet servicing hatch, but it's all fairly familiar stuff. Of course, the big sky view 
over cab sunroof at the top there that's an openable one and that is another option although of course when we go back to da Vinci spec it's likely to be standard and the other thing I should mention of course is that all three of the Ecovit camper vans are two berth models but if you want a four berth um, about four grand adds a pop top on the top and then you can have all three of the layouts as a four berth. Now I've slipped my shoes off to come into this Ecovit camper van but actually you don't get carpets in the living area just in the cab. What you do get is a nice big over cab sunroof, it's an opening one as well and that lets a lot of daylight into the vehicle. There's a lot of artificial light too, these nice reading lights both incorporating USB ports and lots of mood lighting with these strip lights that give a rather nice sort of dynamic shape to the, uh, the cupboards above. But it's the classic um, European half net lounge as you'd see in most rival camper vans. What you don't get is that big bulky table that often makes what is in this sort of layout a compact lounge feel even more compact so without the table here it does feel a lot more open and you haven't got to go and find a table and lug it through the van it's here all the time fixed to the walls permanent fitting but when you want to use it it just just flips up it's a tight fit but it's fine and then Leica tells you to leave it folded for travel, that's from a safety point of view and so that you don't impact the table or the table impact you in the event of an accident. But on a lighter and more positive note, when the table's lifted up in this coffee table mode, it's a really nice little size. It's not too big, not too bulky, but I found yesterday tapping away on my laptop, cup of coffee, it was great. It's just big enough, it's really sturdy like that be great for snacks, coffees, evening drinks and then when you want more, more table space just push out these supports, they're a bit stiff but they're fine, lift the tabletop over. Now it's obviously not going to be quite as sturdy at that end but it's good enough, it's um, now a perfectly adequate table for what is a two-person camper van. So let's fold the table away And now let's look at this half net seat. Well, you'd think it was pretty standard, wouldn't you? It's what you'd expect to see in a camper van like this, but lean under here. And just like on the cab seats, you've got a rail that you can lift up and slide the seat forward. As the seat goes forward, the backrest gives a bit of recline as well. So if you're gonna have passengers for a long journey, that seems much more comfortable. And another positive is that you get Isofix as standard. At last, the camper van industry seems to be beginning to catch up with the car trade on that. Slide the seat back. Under here, you've just got a little bit of storage. That's quite normal in this sort of layout, quite typical. And it does mean that the seats all have um, the floor at the same height, so no one's got dangly feet upholstery um, this is the Udine upholstery it's about a 600 pound option I think it's a leatherette rather than a proper hide but you can have real leather if you want it what else well you've got blinds and fly screens on the windows of course they're the flat blinds rather than the pleated ones but they seem a nice quality fitting um, and yeah it does feel a bit more spacious than others of its type because as I say the light artificial and um, and daylight and of course the lack of the permanent table looking at the finish well the interior design is copied over from the Ecovit coach builds the low profiles and the A-classes so you get these lovely full-length metal handles to the top lockers you just lift those up to open the cupboards you get this gloss finish, the nice mood lighting. Um, this fabric uh, headlining is another plush feature. And then you've got this 
copper style finish on the worktops, worktop edges and the tabletop edges. It all does hint at that Italian style that Leica has always been rather famous for. One aspect that Leica is making quite an emphasis of in this new Ecovit camper van is the insulation and they're using um, an aluminium backed fibre that uh, not only is used in all the usual places but they're, they're making a point of the fact they're insulating inside the sliding door in the back doors there's extra insulation in the roof the walls the floor so it is a camper van that's been fully designed for winter use combine that with the fact that you've got a choice of heating systems gas is standard gas electric is optional diesel is optional as well and even diesel and electric now this particular van's got the combi diesel unit which i'd highly recommend for a van like this perhaps with the diesel electric option if you're going to use more campsites but the combi diesel unit is quiet it's easy to use and of course, it reduces your reliance on gas, which is important if you're touring off the beaten track and on the continent. Another aspect that I should have mentioned, perhaps, is that you've got a choice of furniture styles. This one is the lighter of the two, but there's also the, uh, the mocha colour scheme, which is a much darker furniture, if you prefer that. And there's no extra cost for the, the two furniture types. So what else can I tell you about this lounge? Well, I wish this seat would go back that way a bit more. There's quite a lot of wasted space behind me, but that's just the type of swivel mechanism fitted. And it does mean that there's not a vast amount of knee room between this seat and the half tonnette. As I say, I really like the lighting, but there isn't uh, a reading light over the swivel driver's seat. There's one for the swivel passenger seat and one for the half tonnette, but not one over there, which seems slightly slightly odd but uh, never mind you've got really good lighting generally in this motorhome and some of it is dimmable too uh, storage well there's no storage under the half donut i'm afraid your boiler is under there and then at the side you've got a little flap that shows you your rcd and your gas taps and while we're on storage, yes, these top lockers are very nice, look look very smart, but these little recesses over the cab, like so many of their type, they're more style than substance because you'd be wary of putting too much in there that could fall out and land on your head as you go round a roundabout. But I have to say, this does feel a cut above a lot of the opposition. In terms of just style and finish, it is beginning to win me over. Now this is a 5.4 metre motorhome with a fixed bed so you can't expect miracles when it comes to the galley. There's only so much space in a van like this and this is typical of this type of camper van with a kitchen on the offside part way across the sliding door. Lift these glass lids and you reveal a combined stainless steel two burner hob and sink. Different size burners, you've got push button ignition for the gas. Um, yeah, it's, it's what you'd expect. And then there's a raised section here where I've put my Tassimo coffee machine just to show the size of this bit of worktop. And also because, well, if I didn't have coffee, this video would probably be about 30 seconds long and not very interesting. But you've got two three pin sockets there. Your light switches are behind here. And that is a useful bit of worktop. But with the lids raised, it looks as if it's the only worktop, doesn't it? Well, no, not quite, because this. Not a hinged flap, as you so often get, but a completely freestanding one. You just slot it into that rail and hinge it down. And as you can see, it's well, not. I've come across similar sort of systems on a Rapido and they've been a bit easier, but this one doesn't seem to slot in all that easily and it's a little bit, mm, yeah, not the firmest of surfaces. I wouldn't want to chop anything on there, but it, it's a bit of work, Tom. And if you were serving food for somebody sitting outside, then it, it would be very useful for that. But yeah, worktop is quite limited. On the positive 
Let's get that out of the way. On the positive, the fridge, which is a 70 litre compressor model, that opens from either side. So if your partner's sitting outside and they want another cold beer, they don't have to come into the van and disturb you cooking the dinner. They can just help themselves. The other thing I really like, apart from these um, flip-up metal handles, which are rather nice, this nice feeling of quality about them, and also a feeling of quality about the soft close mechanisms. I mean, these drawers are, well, they're sort of domestic quality. But anyway, I was getting sidetracked. These drawers are so much better than cupboards. You're not kneeling down and trying to see with the head torch or something what's in the back of a cupboard. You've got three decent sized drawers there for all your plates and pots and pans and so on. So that is good practical kitchen storage. A bit more cupboard space up top as well. And perhaps it's interesting that they haven't extended that over this area. So it does open out the, the feeling of space in the van again a bit more. And then the final aspect of this sort of kitchen area isn't part of the kitchen as such at all, but the wardrobe. So you've got the wardrobe here, as you'd expect, where the tall part of the furniture is. It's not full height, so you've still got a nice clear view through the van, which again helps with the spaciousness of the vehicle. It's a surprise, this one, and I really like this feature. It's just a little novelty, but you'd expect, look at it, it's only slim, you'd expect a tiny little wardrobe that's not much use to anybody, but pull it out and your Sunday best is nice and easily accessible. And I must wear that Route 66 shirt for one of my videos one day. I can't wait for the comments on that one. The other thing to notice is this finish on the walls, this sort of embossed patterned effect on the woodwork. It's behind the half done it as well. And it's another thing that's been taken over from the Ekovit coach belts and the, the full sized motorhomes in the Ekovit range. And yeah, it's a bit of Italian flair for you. Now, a key aspect of a layout like this, of course, is the bed. And often, because these beds are mounted quite high to give you lots of storage underneath, if you haven't got long legs, the access can be quite awkward. Well, Leica have solved that with a neat set of slide-out steps. With the steps out, access to the washroom isn't impaired, but you can't now open the wardrobe. But hey, that's really not a big issue. So access to the bed is now lovely and easy and I've just banged my head which shows that there are cupboards all the way around the, the bedroom. Gives you lots of storage for your clothes and aren't they lovely? You've got these long full length metal handles again which feel lovely quality. You've got these nice curved corners and the glossy finish. It all looks very smart. But anyway back to the bed. It has a breathable uh, mite proof anti-allergy mattress with a washable cover um, and it's very very comfortable too. What I can't quite make out is why like I haven't made the mattress just a bit bigger because there's gaps all the way around it so if you take our usual policy of actually quoting the mattress measurements the bed seems a mite small um, 1.77 meters by 1.17 meters that does, yeah, it does seem a bit small, doesn't it? But actually, if you measure to the walls and furniture to the wall across, then it's 1.88 metres by 1.22, so six foot too long, I think that, that translator translates those. So quite a decent sized bed, actually. Just wish they'd fill that gap with a bit more mattress. Anyway, it's a comfortable bed. You've got windows. Um, on two sides at the foot of the bed, two opening windows in the back door as well. You've got a roof vent above on top, so loads of ventilation for those summer nights when you can't sleep because it's all stuffy. You've got loads of lighting too in the ceiling around the top lockers and under the, the locker over there. Then you've got reading lights again with built in USBs and a nice padded headboard behind me as well then it does seem slightly a shame that having gone to all that effort with the padded headboard, of course you've got this locker above so you can't properly 
sit up in bed. Shame they didn't make this just an L shape and leave this part out so you could nice and comfortably sit up in bed. But you know, I suppose they're trying to maximise storage in what is, after all, quite a small van. And so to the washroom. And, well, obviously, as I keep reminding you, this is a compact little motorhome, 5.4 metres long, isn't much bigger than a long wheelbase Volkswagen T6. But despite that, you have got full independence from campsite facilities if you want to go off grid. All hides behind the timbre door, so when you've got access, um, somebody working in the kitchen or you want to get into bed, the door doesn't get in the way. Then inside, you've got this nice corner basin. Not a lot of work top around it, but you've got room for um, a soap dispenser. So that's the essentials covered. And essential use of the loo, well, there's plenty of both shoulder and leg room on here for most of us. So that's pretty good too. And it all is very nicely finished. You've got a big mirror on the wall, this nice patterned woodwork again. All does feel typically classy. Lighting is good. You've got roof vent above and an opening window, which is quite unusual, especially again in a, in a van of this size. And then when it comes to showering, well, the tap pulls out and clips above me there onto the bracket above. And you need a shower curtain, which rather than hanging permanently in the space, it just press studs all the way around. So pity you do need to use a curtain to protect all this lovely woodwork. But I suppose that's the price to pay rather than having it all just white plastic. Depends how much you're going to use your shower. One single outlet in the shower tray, so that's another little bit of a downside. But also remember that headroom is slightly limited in here, 1.77 metres in this washroom. That's with the uh, duckboard in place, which you have to remove for showering anyway. But it doesn't make a great deal of difference, it's just a, a few millimetres. So all in all, Decent little washroom, looks nice, best for washing and using the loo. Showering's probably more occasional. Another really important aspect of a camper like this is storage. It's one of the reasons you'll choose a fixed bed layout over, say, a rear lounge. Open these back doors and you've got a massive amount of space under the bed. Now, I like the way Leica have divided this space. I saw a similar uh, concept in the Pilot van that I recently uh, reviewed. And of course, you can watch that video after this one if you want to take a look at another fixed bed Continental camper van. Anyway, this space in here measures 880 mil by 105, 1050 millimeters. And then headroom above the false floor, that's about 570 millimetres. But if you don't want it in there, you just slide it out. And then you've got about 790 millimetres headroom in there. Now, that slides in and out when you, whether you want it or not. The panel at the front of the bed, that is also removable if you want to get long loads in there. You've got tie down hooks as well to secure your load. You've got uh, 12 volt and 230 volt sockets under there as well. And then if you want to get anything really big in the, into the space, you just fold and stack the mattresses at the side, and lift up slatted bed base and it just stows into the vertical position and then these well, <laughs> these supports just come out they're quite stiff so you do have to give them a bit of a whack to get them out but they just come out too and as I said you can simply remove the front section as well to get really large loads into the space with everything out you really do have a room for bicycles 
Oh, it's van sized storage then really. And I have to say, like I have done this really, really well. Some of these folding bed mechanisms are quite fiddly and don't work all that well. This one works really, really well. You've also got your gas locker here, two 11 kilogram cylinders in there, and your fresh water tank is built in over here. That's 100 litres in there with access at the top for servicing. Wastewater tank, that's underneath, that's 90 litres, and on this model it's heated and insulated as well for winter camping. One aspect that I haven't talked about yet is the base vehicle, and of course it's the ubiquitous Fiat Ducato. Just about everything in this class is based on the Fiat Ducato, if it isn't based on a Peugeot or Citroën version of the same thing. Now Fiat have just facelifted the Ducato and they're calling it the new Ducato. It's the Series 8 in fact. Um, calling it the new Ducato is a bit like calling me the new Peter Vaughan because I've got a new jumper on. But hey, it has got a few changes. There's a new steering wheel. It's smaller, a bit chunkier, and it's attached to new electric power steering. New dials, new manual gearbox, new fresh air vents. Still the same cheap plastics, and it drives much the same as we'll see in a minute when I take it out on the road. There's lots of new toys that you can have. Um, this one comes as standard with familiar things like cab air conditioning, cruise control, uh, driver and passenger airbags, hill descent control, traction plus, We've got, we've got ESC with rollover mitigation. It's got crosswind assist, which would be nice to, to try out if it was a windy day. But looking at the trees, it's as still as anything today. But crosswind assist will be nice if you're uh, doing lots of motorway journeys. You've also got a trailer stability system. So if you're planning on towing, that'll be another plus. But what you don't get is all the newfangled electronic assistance systems that are becoming part of 21st century motoring or 2020, 2022 motoring, should I say. If you want all those toys, they come packaged together at £870 and that'll give you a lane departure system, um, traffic sign recognition, automatic lights and wipers, those sort of things personally things I could do without. But you also don't get um, a standard Fiat's new all digital display for the instruments. That's uh, I think £2,300. Um, but it does give you things like the reversing camera. Leica on this particular example of issued Fiat's posh bits and bobs and Gonix instead for this aftermarket Xcent system, which let's switch on there. Fortunately, you've got a, a switch to allow you to use the system while you're parked up. So it's not just once you turn the ignition off, everything's off. And you've got DIB, DAB radio, Bluetooth, navigation, it all uh, And of course, you're reversing camera in there as well. What else? Well, another new option that we haven't got on this particular vehicle is the LED headlights. They're £1,590. So you can up-spec beyond this particular vehicle, although I dare say that if you started ticking too many options boxes, you might have a very long time waiting for your new motorhome to arrive. Anyway, this one is pretty decently spec'd. Let's go for a drive. Now I drove this little Leica for the first time yesterday and a couple of things surprised me. First of all, the 140 bhp engine, well I think I've been spoiled with a lot of 160s and actually because this is such a small van, 140 bhp seems absolutely fine, in fact it feels quite sprightly. I know not really got much on board apart from me but I think it would be more than adequate for most people. The other thing that surprised me, well when you've been um, road testing motorhomes as long as I have, you get quite used to lots of squeaks, rattles, clatter as you go along, especially on a lovely uneven bit of uh, Lincolnshire 
tarmac like this. Well, congratulations Leica. This doesn't rattle. The furniture seems really solid and it's virtually silent from the conversion. Should also say that uh, this latest 2.2 litre Fiat engine seems quieter than the old 2.3 as well. Of course, the change came about, not for refinement, but to meet the latest Euro 6D uh, emission standard, which uh, all vans now have to meet in 2022. Oh, what else can I say about this Fiat? Well, the new steering, the new electric steering does feel lighter, still quite precise, but I think I prefer a little bit more feel. The new manual gearbox, well, that's very slick too and very light and easy to use. If you want an automatic, you'll have to find another three grand. But uh, the nine speed Fiat Auto is a lovely unit. So Fiat called this a new Ducato, but it feels much like the old one in many ways. It's still got that very distinctive firm ride, which gives you great stability, but also can feel a little bit bumpy on uh, less than smooth tarmac. One thing you notice, of course, with the 5.4 5 metre van is it does feel very manoeuvrable. Um, you can spin it round in spaces where a bigger van just won't, uh, won't fit. And that is a big part of the appeal of this particular van. So what's my final verdict on this Leica EcoVit 540? Well, one thing I discovered while doing the driving shots for the video was that the front fog lights are actually cornering lights as well. So that's something I would definitely specify if I was buying a more upmarket Fiat Ducato camper van now. Back to the specifics of this vehicle, well, there's lots of bits I like. The layout, of course, has been done, well, I've been done hundreds of times before, but there's much less choice if you want a 5.4 meter van with this layout than there is if you want the six meter van. And I do like that more compact size for driving, parking, maneuvering. It does feel closer to a VW camper in size, but with full facilities. So the specifics of the Ecovip and how does it rate against its many, many rivals? Well, I like the fridge, the position, the fact that you can get at it from outside. I like the travel seat that adjusts. I like the table that folds and unfolds so neatly. I like the big sunroof. I like the external styling. I like the slide out wardrobe and the kitchen drawers. You're getting the impression that I like this, aren't you? Yeah, I do. I think there's a lot to be admired in this little Leica motorhome. There's some details that could be improved. I'd like to be able to have a shower without using a shower curtain. I'd like the bed's mattress to fit better in the space. And I'd like to be able to sit up in bed to read. But there's no doubt that this is definitely a cut above some of its rivals. And now it must be considered at the top of its class. However, there is a premium to pay for that. And at £67,000, as seen here, or over £70 by the time you've specified an automatic gearbox, it is starting to look a bit pricey. That, I'm afraid, is the way motorhome and campervan prices are going in 2022. Blame Covid, blame Brexit, blame supply shortages, blame supply and demand, and the fact that everybody seems to want a campervan these days. Whatever the factor, and it's all of those things, well... I'm afraid motorhomes are getting that bit dearer. If you can afford it, this is a lovely little van. And I'd uh, certainly take a look at this and the 600 model and the 645 sounds interesting when that arrives too. If you fancy a Leica that's a bit bigger, take a look at our Ecovip coach built video that we did last year. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video and a look at the very latest in Italian camper vans. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've got any comments, we'll try and respond to them. Thank you for watching.